One way that the nerve controls the quality of a muscle contraction is by altering the frequency of the signals sent to the sarcolemma. For instance, signals up to 10 stimuli per second result in a muscle contraction known as a twitch. Muscle twitches have identical amplitude and are typically not functional muscle contractions. When the nerve sends 11 to 20 stimuli per second, the contraction pattern is referred to as trepe. In trepe, each subsequent contraction presents with a stronger contraction. When the nerve stimulates the muscle at the rate of 20 to 40 stimuli per second, the contraction pattern is referred to as incomplete tetanus. In this case, a stair-step pattern of contraction is noted. Finally, when the nerve provides stimuli to the muscle at 40 or more stimuli per second, the contraction pattern is a smooth muscle contraction known as complete tetanus. This contraction type can generate a significant amount of force and is the most functional contraction pattern. Let's first look at how ATP is produced. The first part of the production process is known as glycolysis. It essentially entails the breaking down of glycogen and ultimately yields a limited amount of ATP. This process reveals a relatively toxic waste product, lactic acid. This process does not require the use of oxygen and is referred to as anaerobic fermentation. The second part of the process requires oxygen and is referred to as aerobic respiration. It produces significantly more molecules of ATP and its waste products are carbon dioxide and water, two substances the body easily excretes. Both these processes occur in the mitochondria. So let's look at how ATP production occurs during about 60 seconds of maximum muscle contraction. For the first 30 to 40 seconds, ATP production is mediated through aerobic respiration with oxygen derived from myoglobin. In addition, the phosphagen system, which includes the action of myokinase and creatine kinase, bolster the amount of available ATP. However, after 30 to 40 seconds of continual maximal contraction, the contraction begins to compress the blood vessels, thereby decreasing the delivery of oxygen to the cell. At this point, the muscle relies more on the anaerobic process for the production of ATP. Also, the compromise to the circulation as a result of the maximal muscle contraction inhibits the ability of the muscle to remove the buildup of lactic acid, leading to the feeling of muscle soreness. After the exercise concludes, respiration rate is increased as we take in more oxygen to repay the oxygen debt.